Last time I showed you guys the shark tails and the tuna tails, I got a lot of questions on how I dry them out. So I figured I'd make a little video on how to do it. So this time I'm making something a little more robust. In the past I just used cardboard boxes. So all I have is a big Rubbermaid container, big enough to uh, fit the shark tail or whatever tail I'm working on. And on one side I cut a hole for a computer fan that's wired to a wall outlet. And then on the other side, that hole is for the air filter. And I just found some air filter at Home Depot that filtered out a lot of the smell. I just mainly if you're living in an apartment complex like me and uh, you don't have a backyard and your neighbors uh, aren't going to be a big fan of this. And then just a little bit of sealant to seal up any holes or leaks. Alright, so I've mounted the fan in so that the air is blowing inside. I put some sealant around it. I also sealed it all up from the inside just to make sure none of the air can get out or at least as little air as possible without going through the filter. On the other side, I put the filter in. Down here I put a little piece of plastic with the heat gun and kind of welded it to the side there. And so I could set the filter in there and tape it in. Uh, the next iteration of this I think I'm going to make a filter holder so I can just take the filters out and replace them. And from this side. Uh, so uh, made my cut a little too large so I welded in some plastic there. Got the filter in. So that's pretty much it for the box. Alright, some of the stuff you'll need. Expanding foam. Some borax. Isopropyl alcohol. An injector. Some tools to cut out meat. And a shark tail or some other tail that you're trying to preserve. First step is we got to get rid of all of that stuff or as much as we can. So I got half. So I just filed the backbone with the cartilage and just kept going as far in as I could. Now I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so we're going to cut some of that backbone out. That way when you go to monitor or hang it, there's not bones sticking out. Right, chunk of the backbone taken out. This or not, it'll be inside. The next trick, this will help later for mounting it as well as just when uh, you get to the part where you have to epoxy. Gives you a nice good anchor point to hang from. I'm just putting it right in the middle of the backbone. A grip point for later. Next we're going to take our injector and get the isopropyl alcohol. The higher the percent isopropyl alcohol the better. This is 70. It works but it's not the greatest. It's hard to get during COVID because it's used in hand sanitizer. Just gonna take a little bit there. I was gonna inject it into the chunks of meat that I couldn't reach 
with the uh, with a knife. This will just help in the, the drying process. Get some of the moisture out. Up next is the borax. Now we have borax in there. So we got a big gap filler. Start all the way at the back. Topped off. Looks looking good. Let's give the foam a chance to harden for a little bit. Put in some drying rags. These put in. I feel like it helps soak up some of the moisture. Alright, the foam's all hard now to the touch. Uh, I can kind of move it around a little bit more. So I put a little rack with some wood. I'm going to put some just regular salt. Plus cheap salt. i grab this. Set it on. I'm just going to put a layer of salt on top. Now to keep all the fins from curling, put the boards on them. Got it all salted, ready to go. Let's get to plug it in. Fans blowing in. I'm gonna have to secure the tape a little better. And put the lid on. See you guys in a week or two.